What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nudge and Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. I'm glad to be back. Needed a much needed a vacation. Uh, Brian, Rebel Moon. I saw the trailer. I saw the tra trailer a couple of times. Certainly, the trailer reminds you of all the things Zack Snyder has done in the past. Absolutely. I can't help but say that this still has me curious, not for a good reason, Brian. I'm curious to see what story is told and how it's told. Visually, I, visually Zack Snyder is very innovative and he does, he has his style that is very unique and um, it always comes across the screen uh, looking well done. Story has always been an issue. And I'm curious to see what this story will be, what it will be similar to, because we've heard the quotes of what Zack Snyder uh, wanted this to be. And I, I was talking to Tracy and Tracy was like, you must be crazy because he, he, he pulled it off with WB. He was able to get them to do what he wanted with the WB. He pitched the story to a bunch of executives who didn't know what they really had, and he got them to sign on. The Lucas people said, you bugging, go somewhere else. <laughs> maybe, I don't know though, but the state of Lucasfilm, maybe they should maybe they should have taken that call a little longer. I don't know, I'm just kidding. But, but. If, yeah, yeah, but it's like, if you have something in mind that's your own thing, let it be your own thing. Brian, what are your thoughts on on the Rebel Moon trailer that you saw? And uh, are you curious as 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 I am? I think so. I think this will be the best and worst of Zack Snyder, and I think it's in the absolute perfect place for him. Uh, what I mean by that is, you mentioned it. I think the trailer. Yeah, like if you if you're a fan of the visual style of Watchmen, 300, you know the, the the DC movies, it's all here. I mean, you can even see it in some of the the quick cuts, uh, the slow mo, the lighting. You can see the echoes of everything that he's done, mm -hmm. and he does have a distinctive palette, and he has a distinctive visual voice, and I think that's awesome. So I think you're going to see that unbridled on display with no in limitation. full effect <laughs> so if you like that if you're interested in that there's nobody holding this back yeah that's the good the bad is as you said story and i would say editing of said visual style is his other weakness he sometimes doesn't know where the line is between sort of slow mo visual <laughs> skill and like visual bombast yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you lean look a little further than I think. You know, and I, I'm, as I said, I, I like Man of Steel generally, but you can just see like the, there's no stop. Like once the action starts, there's just no stopping it. It just keeps going. There's more and more destruction. There's more and more mayhem. It Doomsday, same thing. The Doomsday fight. It's just more and more lightning. It never stops. I think you're also going to see that in this film. I think you're going to be moments where you're like, wow, if we just could have held that back 10, 15 percent, and maybe edited that down it actually would have served the story better than what we got. I, I think you so I think you're going to see the best and worst. But the reason I say it's the best for him is, look, he is the kind of storyteller, quite honestly, that is more made for streaming than he is for the theater. Yes. Because he's not a, he's not a two hour man. Zack Snyder's not a two hour man. And he's already said there's a director's cut, which he's being allowed to make. <laughs> So the, the Snyder Cut is like, he might as well trademark that because he's going to do that with all these films now. But on Netflix, it's okay. And on Netflix, yeah. there's no downside for us to click in and see the different versions. We're not paying any more to do that. We can we can yeah. break it up, watch it on our own time. And so that's why I say, like even though some of these shots are like, yeah, they're great big screen shots. But he, what he's telling you, like the way he's telling it, it's kind of more like a, a mini series. And I think that will work. I think this will draw big viewership numbers. And I think it will get a lot of buzz. I do not think it will be critically acclaimed. And I think it'll be like all Zack Snyder works. It will have uh, a zealous fan base on one side and people who are like, this is the worst of the worst on the other. Can we watch something else? But I yeah, will be there. Yeah. 
And I think yeah, so certainly. Will you. But we will be clicking yes. through to watch this. So Netflix will win and he will win because of that. Yeah, I'm looking for, I'm looking to see what that dialogue is gonna be, Brian. Uh but it does look interesting. I am curious to see what this looks like. It looks pretty cool, it looks very intense. Uh, the one thing I didn't see, which was was peculiar to me, I don't know why it was held back uh, or why he didn't make the cut, was Ray Fisher. Was he in the the trailer? I don't think so. Although, in fairness, there's so many shots with so many characters. Maybe he was, and I haven't seen like a, a, a shot by shot breakdown to to, to reveal him. Yeah. But yeah, supposedly he has a, a decent sized part. Are you surprised? So you talked about the visuals. Are you surprised that this visually is so close to the, or at least in the trailer, is so close to the things he's already done versus him taking some of his style and trying to do something more space and more foreign than we've seen before? I think this is just his, this is the way he does his films and he wants it to look a certain way. This is all, but this is, I think visually, Brian, we're going to see a lot of things. Although it is an avatar, there's some avataristic things in there, right? With him flying and with jumping on a, bir on, a, on, a, on a bird or whatever. There are some elements of those movies in there as well. Uh, and they look good. So I'm looking forward to seeing not just what we've seen before, because when you see it, you see 300 shots, you see Watchmen shots, you see a bunch of stuff that he's done yeah. already. I want to see how much further it goes. I also thought it was interesting, like, you know, there's been this thing running, this, this tagline running around kind of F Star Wars, right? That's kind of literally been something that was said apparently in the production of this film. And, and he's kind of said like, you know, it's Star Wars, but it's R rated and it has the sex and it has the violence and the language that you never got in Star Wars. I do think there will be a little bit of you know, I think Rebel Moon maybe has got like a double entendre to it. It's like Zack Snyder, you know, as Rebel. Um, because there's a shot in this trailer where there's clearly two lightsabers being ignited by a character. I mean, that's what they are. There's two red laser swords being held by a character and wielded in battle. And there's the impression of a force-like power by at least somebody in this film. And I do wonder if there <laughs> will be this almost irreverent, knockoff of some of these franchise films that zach is saying inspired this right they'll, they'll, they'll deliberately be star wars-esque you know lasers and scenes and action but you know done with the over the top r-rated with a very much sort of you know i'm uh, i'm deliberately pointing the finger at lucasfilm for not letting me do this in the star wars universe i, I get the sense that might be something we're talking about here in december Certainly. I mean, he already did it with the WB. He's doing it with Star Wars. It's going to be the same thing. He said F, Mar F Marvel. Didn't he say that in a, in a, in a, yeah, in a, in a cinema con, whatever it was? And, and now he's doing the same thing to Star Wars. He's creating the line where you, you, you like this or you don't like it and you're on this side and you like Rebel Moon. He, I mean, he's creating some new stuff, but it's, it's stuff that we've already seen. And, and, and can he deliver on uh, what we expect or what his fans expect, uh, uh, you know, uh, like you say, you, you don't think it's going to be critically acclaimed, but I, I think Zach needs that to, uh, he doesn't care though. I think he doesn't care. Cause no. you know, if you don't understand the film, he's going to blame you, <laughs> exactly <right>. you know, <laughs> so, yeah, so you know, you, you hit on it. This is a guy who, he can't, in, in his mind, he can't lose, right? Like if the film, if he delivered a film that w was critically acclaimed, then he would celebrate it as finally the industry understands me. And so long as he delivers films where, you know, the Rotten Tomatoes is 50% and the critics and the Metacritic are right in the middle. And, and but like, it's the average of people who love it and the average of people who hate it. Yeah, he's going to say the people who hate it just don't get it. They don't get me. And this is just me being me, right? And yeah. And so in that way, he, he, he can't he can't lose. I am curious. So we have seen Netflix do these like limited theatrical releases um, around projects, including Zach's um, what was it uh, uh, Army of Darkness? Uh, the, 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 or not the Army of Darkness, but you know what I'm talking about, the zombies. Army of the Dead. Yeah. Army of the Dead, the zombie series that he does. Um, 
if this is offered, because this comes out around Christmas, if this is offered as a limited theatrical release, and, and there may be fewer theatrical releases because of the strikes this holiday season, would you pay to go see it versus watch no. it on Netflix? And I would not either, but I'm curious to see how that fares if they do it in sort of an empty marketplace. If the reviews are horrible, then it'll get horrible numbers. Um, if it gets some buzz, then there's a possibility for future stuff for him. I don't know, but um, it's certainly a and it comes out in Christmas. Wow, it's certainly Brian. Uh, very it's, a, it's an event driven piece of content that uh, everybody's going to be waiting for to see. And to compare, unfortunately, which it shouldn't be, this should be his own thing. It should have been his own thing when he pitched it. His timing's not bad with this project because it's coming at Certainly time, not. right? If you think about like superhero genre is at the lows right now. Star Wars is nowhere to be found on the big screen. So and the box and, and, and nowhere to be found the audience the seems to be wanting new stuff. Exactly. So this is feeling like blockbuster sci-fi. You know, not superhero, but similar DNA type of epic, you know, f storytelling. Like, there's a lane here. Like, if this yeah. is decent, like, as I said, I could see Netflix, you know, say, telling you, like, in terms of its watched programs, like, this is up there with anything they ever put out. Um, in Let a way that the this. Snyder Cut wasn't. Because, like, the Snyder okay. Cut, because it was DC and because it was an existing property... You know, that was like a lot of hype. I thought it was going to be yeah. a big deal, and then it kind of wasn't. Yeah, this yeah. thing, I actually think, will draw in curious audiences. Speaking of that, Netflix certainly made a sizable investment into Nef into uh, Zack Snyder's content and his, and his uh, way of doing things. If Netflix doesn't see an uptick in their subscribership, will that hinder his forward progress on this possible franchise yeah i mean i think look i mean as we talk about the excess right him he, he's be getting permission to do basically two movies right this thing is two parts four hours to begin with and then there's a director's cut behind that which i'm assuming will be like eight hours so that's like four movies right there that they've already mm. signed off on but listen if this thing comes and goes and is doesn't leave a mark and is reviled and people almost mock it for 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 what it looks like or what the story it tells then no i think i think netflix will will rein in his budget going forward mm -hmm. and, and as we know zach doesn't really like that very much that's not really the, the environment where he's typically operated so I'm not sure where that will. This lead is a bit him. of foreshadowing for the news. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that's yeah. I think that's look. I mean, I, and I would be like, look, Crimea River. I mean, great films have been you know made on much slimmer budgets than he's had to work with. So like, figure mm. out a way to be innovative and 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 deal with it. But I think that will be the natural consequence. I think in this day and age, you don't get five six shots to kind of deliver a hit. Like you kind of yeah, get yeah, one yeah, when, yeah, when they hand you a budget one, of this yeah. this size, you get one shot. To like yeah. generate an audience. Yeah. Anything else, Ryan? Before we wrap this one up? No, but like I said, I, I guess I, with with very little else to look forward to this holiday season, uh, and, and potentially even less, depending on how the studios manage their calendar with the strikes. Like, I am looking forward to this. Like, legitimately, I will be ready, ready and willing to watch all of it uh, when it comes out. Was Aquaman already uh, delayed? No, but we that that's supposedly a possibility that could go to spring of 24. Okay. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Rebel Moon, uh, the trailer, and are you uh, excited to see what Zack Snyder has to offer um, in this Star Wars-esque type of film? Um, it'll be interesting to hear the fans talk and compare and um dissect this film and what it reminds them of because storytelling has not been one of Zack snyder's strong suit and this will be yet another uh opportunity for him to prove people wrong into what he can do hopefully he hire somebody else to do it i don't know but let's see
Let's see. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes.